this dihydroboronon is the perfect thing to create a serum concentration of a DHT mimetic that would allow such an androgenic environment, so much androgen signaling to the brain that it would yield a very hypermasculinization environment. What is up, everyone? It's Roos. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's ASMR sip is night smith's homewire.com. Keep on code Russo. ASMR spritz, intelligent elephant argon. You gotta buy it to smell it. But here's your spritz noises. All right, welcome back to Peducation. Today, I'm going to be doing one testosterone dihydroboronon. I have a lot of experience with dihydroboronon because it helped me recover from PFS. I'm going to be featuring the Anabolics 11th edition for the history only. I really don't think this book nails how I felt and or how my friends have felt with dihydroboronon and this book really isn't correct on this compound. I am gonna feature the history for you guys to learn. All right, one testosterone was first described in 1962 as the Basically, the medical community was creating tons of analogs of testosterone. They were able to stabilize and create a 5-alpha reduced compound off of boldenon. So the real key of this compound is it does not need 5-AR. It is already 5-alpha reduced the minute you ingest it or inject it. You do not need 5-AR to get it closer to dihydrotestosterone, dihydroboronon. What does the 5-alpha reduction do? Well, in theory, it leads to more androgenic properties, such as hypermasculization effects, not really muscle building effects. So when we're talking about the pendulum of anabolic versus androgenic, I would have DHB way over in the androgenic category used for hardening muscles, creating a more androgenic environment as far as hypermasculinizing yourself, which could help in central nervous system activities requiring fast twitch reaction time. This is all where dihydroboronon slots in, but really it was this weird analog that only caught light in 2002 when it was released as a supplement. And it was released as an oral supplement, an oral soft gel supplement that came out in around 2002, and that's where it really caught its height. Now, in this book, it says there's virtually no oral bioavailability, so these soft gels were proven very ineffective and overall as the pro-hormone boom kept going and going. Obviously, the best compounds are gonna stick around, and this one kind of got swept under the rug until UGL started making an injectable format. So it was classified as a Schedule Three substance. It was classified as a steroid around 2005. So it was on the market as the soft gel. Everyone realized the soft gel wasn't really that effective oral bioavailability wise. So they switched to a transdermal gel, which seemed to be the one that everyone enjoyed the most. And then it was phased out with the Schedule Three classification leading towards more hormones popping off in 2007 that weren't on the list. One testosterone was on the list. As far as the structure goes, one testosterone is a derivative of dihydrotestosterone, meaning it contains one additional double bond between carbon one and two of the structure. Oh, they didn't just throw up the structure. So this is mimicking DHT. It's a cypionate ester in the injectable format, meaning you can have a controllable serum concentration, plasma concentration of something that mimics dihydrotestosterone so closely without having to use actual dihydrotestosterone because I personally couldn't find dihydrotestosterone cypionate. I couldn't find any esterified version of dihydrotestosterone for me to use in my recovery meaning if I would use dihydrotestosterone powder, the half-life would be over within 30 minutes. And if I'm trying to bake my androgen receptors back to normal, I need an ester to create a serum concentration. So dihydroboronon cypionate is really useful in the fact that you could increase your plasma concentrations of something that's so close to the androgenic side of dihydrotestosterone that you could increase it drastically. That's where it really comes into play. DHB does not convert into estrogen at all. 
there's no evidence it does. Obviously, it is basically a mimetic of dihydrotestosterone to a certain degree. So hair loss and prostate enlargement, all these things that come with higher DHT levels, androgenic acne, oily skin, increased sebum of all your acne glands, everything like that is going to be associated with higher levels of DHT. DHB is extremely close. Expect that to be a problem. But as far as the estrogen goes, I feel like this hormone is so powerful at the AR docking that if you're not supplementing a good amount of estrogen into your body during this, you could lead towards an estrogen imbalance being androgen dominant and overall not really having much gains because you're choking out your own estrogen if you're not using something that is going to convert into estrogen to keep you stabilized. All right, as far as liver toxicity, it is noted in medical data to be pretty liver toxic, increasing liver weight even in the medical setting, which most steroids do not. It has also been proven to be kidney toxic via the underground UGL form boards, although that's different depending on each individual's reaction, but there is a degree of kidney toxicity as well as liver toxicity with this compound. All right, that's pretty much all I like out of this book. What they say it does, I'm going to argue against. So they're saying that this is a pretty anabolic compound, but it has androgenic properties. I'm here to say after experience with it during my most defeated state that it is extremely androgenic. I noticed horrible aggression side effects in the higher dosages. This is dosed at 100 milligrams per mil. So this is very potent androgen, right? Most andro like testosterone is 250 a mil. You know, this is like one of these androgens that like only 100 mega a mil. So that means how powerful it is. I'll say it like this. I got horrible weird mood side effects, right? As far as aggression, just felt like my DHT was through the roof. What I needed for the time, but overall, if I was using this recreationally and not as a therapeutic, I would be kind of off put by that. I felt a weird, dry, flat muscle sensation. No matter how much sustenone I paired it with, it seemed to really dry, flatten me out. But overall, during the time, I needed that AR signaling to, again, hit my brain, reset, heal the front of my brain that was damaged, as well as keep the androgen receptors reduced and redo the androgen receptors as I am using sodium valparate to reprint new RNA to redo my androgen architecture around my body. This dihydrobolanon is the perfect thing to create a serum concentration of a DHT mimetic that would allow such an androgenic environment so much androgen signaling to the brain that it would yield a very hypermasculinization environment. That's what you can know from dihydrobolanon. With regular bolanon, I don't notice any of this. And the main kicker and the argument that people will have in this comment section is why the fuck are you fucking around with dihydrobolanon when you can just use primabolin? And I would agree with that. I didn't really look into dihydrobolanon ever. I didn't really have like this, oh, DHB is like the holy grail that I don't know about. Again, this is what it's touted as, but I've already had one client that I've completely reversed their post finasteride syndrome. We got his bloods pulled, his kidneys were elevated as well as his liver was elevated. Now we were using extreme dosages to again, reverse his post finasteride syndrome. And he used finasteride at 18 years old, one fucking pill and boom, he's castrated immediately. So this DHB really came in there, allowed him to do the DHB sodium valparate experiment and it worked on him as well as me. So it's proven to be super androgenic because most compounds will not fight this AR overexpression right? Most compounds don't have the same. I'll have Andrew throw up the docking short. This is why DHB works so well. And some people can get away with Mastron or Primobol and has to be a DHT derivative. But if we look at DHB specifically, DHB, Tremblone, Mint, everyone sees those as the more powerful androgens, right? They're more powerful because they have a high amount of intrinsic efficiency. What that means in pharmacological terms is its ability to drug find receptor, dock, send signal. The signal it sends in that docking stage, that transmission stage, is 10 times, 20 times, whatever arbitrary number you want to put there, above what mm -hmm. testosterone is, above what mandrolone is. Those drugs drive such a higher chemical signaling cascade. We need that. Because what we need to do in this scenario is overwhelm the receptor while also right. the receptor. 
So we're trying to fix it from an upstream and a downstream problem. So architecturally improve receptor and then have so much drug, it's got to go somewhere. So as Kiko explains, right, it's not dot, like it's pretty much just as powerful at signaling as dihydrotestosterone, if not more, probably more. And overall, you can create the serum concentration that leads you to a hyper-masculized environment. How do I see this playing out if you're going to use it recreationally? I think you would bulk in the winter, you would do your wet cycle, you would have all your extra tissue and then into the summer if you wanted to use a testosterone base and dihydrobolinone to harden it up dihydrobolinone would harden it up it would create a more androgenic looking muscle meaning you'd have more dense crispy muscles like you see bodybuilders when they compete they're on tons of androgenic compounds whenever they're off season they're on tons of anabolic compounds so dhb is in the androgenic side personally i can't really recommend it you know like the mood side effects were weird i had extreme bouts of aggression on this compound granted i was taking extreme dosages in a depleted state but a lot of people are like would you do dhb like now that you're almost healed and like is this a staple that you would continue to use and no, like we're seeing that kidney toxicity when i could just scale primable and higher weighed it out right primable and takes forever to stack up it's expensive to run but at least i know it's super non-toxic with dhb the minute i start playing around with it in the back of my head i know it's super toxic so that would be really off-putting for me to use it recreationally it has this weird key slot in this pfs post accutane post ssssri world where it's really good at stuffing those androgen receptors back to normal if you have a weird reaction to medication long C word as well. I see this slotting in. If there's any AR damage, it can fix the AR damage. You're essentially using a dihydrotestosterone mimetic that has a half-life so long that you can continually stack up the plasma concentration and bake all the AR architecture in your entire body back down. I wouldn't really mess with it if you don't have issues like that. You know, I don't really see a point of DHB other than maybe like a little bit of a compliment as far as hardening your body on a summer cut. I could see that. But really, when I think about it, I'd be like, why well, won't you use Primo? Why won't you use Masteron? There's other things you could use, especially considering dihydrobolinone. It's not like you're avoiding the hair loss side effects, the body hair growth side effects. You're not avoiding the androgen acne side effects. You're not avoiding any of that with this dihydrobolinone. Is it super powerful mental euphoria wise on mental aggression? Yeah, I feel like your central nervous system could operate in a faster sense when it comes to any fast twitch muscle activity such as boxing wrestling any of that i do see it slotting in as a potent androgenic agent for that is it really good for putting on tons of tissue my two cents no i think it's a horrible bulking compound i think it really should only be used to cut up your body i know a lot of people are going to swear by dihydrobolinone because it is super powerful it's super powerful. I'm not going to say it's not super powerful, but I just don't see the point when we have Prima Bull and the Master on. I see the point if you're in a weird, you know, disease state from one of these drugs that cause an over multiplication of androgen receptors and then also down regulated your brain. I see DHB being able to slowly help you undo that and reverse that disease. That's where it really comes in. But if if I, am I going to revisit dihydrobolinone? No, I have a few vials left and I don't think I will touch it, especially after seeing firsthand the liver and kidney damage it did. It's one of those things where dihydrobolinone is super hyped up, but there is liver toxicity noted, there's kidney toxicity noted. It's basically mimeticing dihydrotestosterone. So you have this weird thing where, yeah, dihydrotestosterone is linked to being manly and faster CNS twitch firing and aggression, libido, sexual function, all these things, but it's also linked towards prostate enlargement, androgenic acne, oily skin, SHBG crash all these other things that are counteracting the good where something like prima bullen is just like yeah prima bullen is there in the top slot because it's not toxic it's super stackable you can inject it and run it forever and as long as you're continuing to get real prima bullen it's gonna yield a dry look that's pretty similar without the mental aggression side effects that unless you're a fighter or you're in a combat sport i don't really 
see you enjoying being on edge, being like that anxious pit bull all the time. Again, unless you're sparring all the time and you need that sort of mental environment, that's where dihydrobonon slots in. It's super powerful. Don't think it's not powerful. If you want to try it, just err on the side of caution with that liver and kidney toxicity. I will see you guys in my next video.